Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonam Putra. With me as always is Vivek Iyer. We start the December series with a bank. Uh, the Nifty Bank and Midcaps, though they did fall from the high sharply, there's been a recovery from those levels, but not to the levels that we saw at the start. But I would say it's looking good for the bulls for now, but it's already December, Vivek. <laughs> it's already December. We've started the December series. Uh, like a couple of days to go as far as the calendar is concerned. But, uh, you know, for the FNO traders, it's December already given the fact that today. And they have 45 new, new stocks. stocks to trade with. So quite a lot happening as far as, you know, the FNO part of the market is concerned. We have quite a lot lined up on the show as well. Let's start off with the top headlines. Stocks clock some early gains and hold in the green ahead of the weekend and a truncated U.S. session after Thanksgiving. Pharma, healthcare and metals are the prominent gainers, while PSU banks and realty drag. Midcaps underperform. A bunch of institutions and other shareholders of Z Entertainment defeat a resolution to reappoint Puneet Goyanka as director. Goyanka, however, continues as CEO of the company. The stock cheers the news. Enviro Infra Engineers lifts as a premium of nearly 50% at 220 rupees per share versus its issue price of 148 rupees per share. Management tells CNBC TV18 that top line growth is expected at 30 to 35%. Poonawala Fincorp sees sharp sell off in trade, becoming the top laggard on mid cap index today. Stock also becomes a part of the 45 new FNO scripts introduced by NSE today. Credit Access Grameen is down over 8% after Goldman Sachs downgrades the stock to sell from a buy rating and cuts the target price to 564 rupees a share from 1,426 rupees earlier, citing a structural de-rating in earnings expectations. Okay, those are some stocks which are on our radar. We'll discuss them in greater detail. But for the markets, as we've been pointing out, looking good on the Nifty, at least the benchmark is uh, very steady, uh, up above that 24,100 mark for now. The mid-caps are the one which are lagging. But remember, this week itself has been very good for mid-cap index. It's up around 2.5%. Bank Nifty is the one which is underperforming as well. But that's been the case for banks for a bit now. Uh, most of the sectoral indices are in the green today. Nifty Pharma is the top gainer. The energy space continues to do well. IT is uh, lending some support and a lot of stock specific action. We'll go to Hormaz who really seems to be in a Friday mood today. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. Hormaz has a smile on his face. Also something to do with the green on the screen. Well, you know, especially in the last 10-15 uh, minutes of the session, you know, some of the sectors that have seen quite a bit of a leg up, number one has been the metal pack. Like you mentioned, IT Pharma lending support since morning and also the fertilizer pack. So names like GNFC, Chumble, they are the ones actually trading near the day's highest point. But Hormaz, I'm sure, has a lot more stocks on the screen, uh, you know, from the broader end of the markets. Hormaz, over to you. Well, you know, it's Friday, so it is obvious the bulls are having a good day, at least on the nifty for now. And then there are certain things that don't change, right? There's already December, yes, but there's the mid-cap index outperforming for the week is something that has not changed either. So we start off with the gainers from the broader markets, considering the fact that the mid-cap index has slipped into the green now. Piramal Pharma is the top gainer there. Z Entertainment at the lowest point of the day, but still holding on to gains of around 4.5%. APL Apollo, one of the FNO inclusions, up 4.5%. And Aster DM was trading with health gains still up around two and a half percent the new fno inclusions of course there are 45 of them but we'll highlight some adani green having a good day continuing to have a good day actually 20 percent higher there cdsl an fno inclusion here as well but on the flip side not a good beginning in the fno space for stocks like zomato and on hfcl two divergent brokerages just came in uh, earlier today one was credit access grameen of course the sharp downgrade that came in from goldman sachs eight and a half percent lower there and dv's laboratories where city has highlighted Highlighted the stock as its top Indian pharmaceutical pick and a 11 to 12 percent potential upside, so 4 percent higher there today. And another stocks that are doing well on the back of strong volumes, they'll come up on your screen. An easy trip trading X bonus today, but 11 percent higher. Praj Industries, Honasa's rebound continues, but the stock remains oversold still after this rebound. Another four and a half percent added there as well. And some underperformers you mentioned, Punawala Fincorp as one of them, Triveni Turbines, KPIT Tech, and NHPC also not having a good day at the office, all of them at the lowest point of the day. Back to you guys. Okay, all right. Some of those stocks which are not having a good day, but Orma is wishing you a very good day and the weekend ahead. Thank you so much for joining in as always and giving us those uh, stocks which are on your radar. It's a good time to welcome Himeen Kaparia from DR Choksi Pinsir for a technical check on the markets. Himeen, good afternoon. Thank you for joining in. Do you think uh, this is an up move which could continue for some days or we'll see consolidation? What are you reading now? Very good afternoon, Thank you for having me on the show. 
I think, like you said, a few days, it could be slightly more than a few days also, Sony. The, the way I look at it, we fell 3,000 points only from 26 to 77 to 23 to 63. So that's almost 3,000 points over six, seven weeks. So even if you were to take a 50% retracement of this fall, uh, so it comes to 1,500 points. And the three-day move, it's so almost a 1,000-point move, okay, with uh, some political events thrown in for good measure. But the 1,000-point move was too quick, too sharp. Uh, there was a gap on the daily chart, uh, Sonal, which, I mean, the markets have a tendency to at least try to cover gaps. So 10 times, 8 times, you would see the market, especially something like a Nifty, uh, had a reasonably sizable gap. Now, that gap was, was supposed to make an attempt to get covered. Now, that's happened yesterday. Interestingly enough, the bank Nifty gap hasn't been covered up. So without getting too technical, one gets the feeling that we saw a rise, we saw a retracement. Now, it's getting ready to make a move on the upside. Time being, uh, I believe the worst is over. I mean, I, I'm not saying this is a rally, but the recovery has some legs to go. And about 23,340, I have a feeling we'll be taking a shot at 24,492 in the next, maybe um, next week. And yes, taking it a step further, if we take out 24,492, which I think is a distinct possibility, open the door for 24,800. So I believe at least the start of December or at least the first half of December with some hits and misses should be slightly positive for the market than the last one and a half months. So Good afternoon, Heyman. So you feel there are more legs to the current rally. What are your top picks for the day? What is it that you're recommending? Very good afternoon, uh, Vivek. Firstly, I mean, I'll repeat what I gave last week. I'd given a buy call on Hindustan Unilever. Target was hit. But once again, deeply oversold, 20 week of a decline, uh, positive divergences, crossover buys on the short term. Simply put, it looks like a relatively safe buy in a market like this. So a buy call on Hindustan Unilever at 2500 Stop loss of 24.50, target of 2600. I believe this target might get overshot, but heavy stock, FMO stock, so be a, can be a slightly slow mover. Second one remains a perennial favorite. Reliance Industries has been down for too long. Uh, uh, I one cannot ignore it. It's fallen off a cliff from 1600 to 1220. At least for the time being, a relief rally is underway. Once again, crossover buys on the daily chart by the mechanical indicators. Uh, it's almost forming a higher top, higher bottom. And the volumes at right. those lower levels have been significant. So we are playing for a decent, if not a good bounce. So one can mm. buy a Reliance Industries at around 1290, stop loss okay. of 1265, target of 1340 once again. Stop loss mm. risk reward ratio is 1 is to 2. It's a modest target. I think right. it should get comfortably taken out and mm. go further. Okay. All right, Himeen, thank you so much for joining in with those picks. Uh, with that, we'll slip into a short break. Management of ESAF Small Finance Bank will join us next to discuss the business outlook and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Well, as promised, uh, we have with us uh, Mr. K. Paul Thomas, the MD and CEO of ESA Small Finance Bank. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Thomas, uh, first up, you know, the business sentiment for players like yourself appears to be uh, quite subdued at this point of time, appears to be significant amount of pain as far as the MFI space is concerned. Now, when we look at your Q2 numbers, significant deterioration as far as asset quality is concerned in the last six years, uh, amongst all of the lenders that you actually compared it to, what is causing so much pain and was it something that was not identified earlier? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vivek, uh, for having me uh, on this show. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, this is one significant uh, uh, asset quality issues uh, uh, we are facing in our journey uh, of last uh, last seven years. Uh, this is, uh, there are there are multiple, multiple reasons. Uh, we have been facing this uh, stress in one of the uh, few of our uh, major uh, uh, geographies, specifically in the West Coast, uh, where we have we work with uh, fishermen, and uh, we have been and and in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So we have been facing since uh, uh, the uh, 
covid uh, we we have been facing this uh, stress and in specifically in kerala market uh, after the 2018 flood also uh, the rural uh, stress we have been facing but uh, suddenly it has uh, it has bloomed uh, with various other reasons uh, one one is that uh, uh, the over indebtedness uh, issue so uh, after in uh, 22 so there are new many new players uh, came in and uh, uh, people were having a lot of money available so uh, there there are uh, there are real over indebtedness has uh, started coming and uh, there are there are uh, uh, regulated entities and non regulated entities uh, operating in this space so that is one major uh, uh, challenge which we have faced and the other issues are very high attrition among the field staff uh, of our uh, business correspondent partners uh, was also contributed because uh, this is a very high touch uh, business model so when when the uh, staff leaves uh, the customer connect uh, we lose the customer connect so that also that also impacted the third point was uh, third issue we have faced that uh, after the covid uh, because microfinance operates more on mutual mutual uh, guarantee uh, the joint liability groups and that's how uh, microfinance has evolved in india so uh, after the covid uh, the meetings got uh, the importance of meetings got affected and uh, technically there was no meeting so that yeah. that affected the uh, mutual guarantee mutual uh, 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 solidarity uh, has been affected so uh, mr thomas more... yes we get yeah. that point uh, my colleague abhishek who tracks the space will also be joining in for the interview but yeah. now the idea is mfi sector doesn't see recovery so how long will this pain continue for you particularly because you've spoken about how things have been bad since covid will this continue yeah. or you're taking steps to improve this yeah we have already taken multiple uh, steps to improve actually from uh, Okay, we we'll just we we'll, yes, there is a snap line. We'll having, just multiple. Uh, we'll just uh, risk. We yeah, we can hear you now, Mr. Tom. Mr. Thomas, there is some audio issue. We'll just try yeah. reconnecting with you as well. Uh, but uh, uh, this is the word coming in from ESAF so far. The issues that they've been facing. Uh, we'll do one thing. We'll slip into a short break. When we come back, we'll uh, get back Mr. Thomas online and try and understand what are the steps taken by ESAF to improve the uh, problems that they're facing on ground. Uh, welcome back. We have with us uh, Mr. Paul Thomas of ESAF SFB. Now, uh, Mr. Paul, you did highlight about attrition. That's true. Sixty uh, percent is the attrition at lower end of the field employees that we are seeing amongst uh, many of the microfinance lenders. Uh, talking specifically about repayments, you know, you have overdues uh, to Avium. Uh, so Avium has an overdue to you. You are one of their bankers. What is the current status? Uh, because uh, as of now, we have the news that they have uh, pushed down their, uh, you know. No repayment to their lenders. Mr. Thomas, can you hear us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I missed you last. Time. Yes, we have a. You were asking about Avion. Yes, we have an exposure with uh, Avion. Uh, our uh, leadership team is in constant touch with uh, uh, the management of uh, Avion, and uh, uh, also uh, we have taken uh, steps uh, to connect with the uh, the board and uh, the leadership, and uh, they promise that uh, they are they are bringing additional equity, and uh, they will be able to service us. So that's that's what uh, the latest uh, update on. On this, so has it been pushed on for some time right now? Pardon? Has the loan repayment timeline been pushed on for a, a few quarters? No, uh, at the moment we have not taken any. We are also interacting with the other lenders. I think uh, the company is calling a lenders uh, uh, meeting uh, early uh, uh, the first week of uh, December. So maybe collectively uh, the, the lenders together will take a call on that. 
So what is the repayment from your end to your lenders? Because some of your lenders are telling me that there are some hiccups in the repayments. They are trying to call you. And they are not unable to connect with you with respect to what is the repayment status. Any outlook uh, due to the stress in the microfinance sector that we are seeing? Are you also facing difficulties with respect to repayment to your lenders? No, we don't have any uh, issue. We have a very sufficient uh, uh, liquidity uh, position. Our LCR is 130 uh, uh, percentage, uh, so we don't have any uh, uh, issues. Our 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 asset quality issues is only on the uh, microfinance uh, portfolio, uh, which uh, now we have already taken this, uh, uh, steps to diversify our assets to uh, secured book, uh, our uh, secured disbursement uh, within last uh, uh, year on year. Uh, basis it has grown to 92 percentage of grown and uh, our gold loan book is uh, growing at 59 percentage our agri book is growing at uh, 20 percentage uh, msme and uh, mortgage book is also growing so uh, and uh, we have, we, have, we have brought down our microfinance uh, uh, from 72 percentage to 62 percentage and we are also uh, planning to bring down by 20, uh, financial year 26 it will be brought down to 40 percentage our original plan was to keep it at uh, 60 percentage of uh, by, by 27 so but uh, we have strategically taken a decision to increase our uh, secured uh, uh, book and also our geographical concentration on south uh, also we have taken steps uh, uh, to bring down our kerala concentration uh, and uh, we were having a concentration on our BC. Hundred uh, percent of our microfinance was operated through BC business correspondence. So we have mm. taken over a major BC operations in in July, uh, so okay. that we were able to uh, bring down our uh, BC. Uh, uh, now uh, today, okay. fifty percent of the microfinance book is uh, managed by bank directly. So we are able okay. to manage the attrition also that side. So, sir, what is the second half outlook looking like in terms of your loan growth, uh, the net interest margins, and also in terms of slippages and credit cost? Uh, can you give us some numbers there? Uh, credit cost will uh, uh, continue to be the same level uh, for the uh, for the first uh, first half. First half. And the other numbers, net interest margins, and the outlook on uh, the other numbers as well. Net interest margin at uh, September it is 8.8.6. So we uh, it will be flat uh, for the next uh, uh, two quarters. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Thomas, for joining us, and we wish you all the best for a much better and improved H2. Uh, let's now slip into a short break. We'll get you more on the markets and stock specific action on the other side. Stay tuned.